ask you about two guys. One, Dylan Raidens, just what you've seen from him so far as he kind of finds his way as in his rookie year. And, and is this a time to maybe kind of see what he's all about? And then I'll get to the next one after that one. Yeah, how you doing, Jim? Um, yeah, Dylan is doing a great job. He is, uh, you know, what you love about the guy is is he's willing to do anything, whatever it takes. So already up to this point, he's played inside, he's played outside, um, and he'll go all day. So he, he just works his butt off and keeps coming back for more. And, uh, you know, as, as anything else, there's ups and downs and stuff like that, but he has a really cool ability to kind of power through, get to the next play, and just keep grinding. So I'm excited for what he's done so far, and, and he's got a long way to go. But I think, you know, I would say – um, he's on the right track at this point. And then, and then the others about Adam Kuhn, and I know a lot of his work is probably going to be technique work. <laughs> where, where do you start from with a guy like that who hasn't played since he was in high school? And, and I guess it's probably going to take patience from everybody just to kind of see what he's all about. Yeah, I mean, you know, Adam is – that's a great point, and you, you, you kind of um, – you kind of sit back and you ask yourself, okay, who, who are the – the players, you know, that, that, you know, what ingredients do they have outside of technique that have a chance to make it? And Adam checks all those boxes. He's a, he's athletic. He's tougher than crap. He works his butt off. He's smart, all those things. So yeah, the, the challenge is, okay, well, he's got, he's got all those um, really important characteristics outside of football, you know, well, well, let's go see how far we can take them from a technique standpoint and, understanding standpoint really I mean he well, he's starting from scratch man how you read a playbook to how you get in a stance and you know all that stuff so I'm excited he, he's the right guy for the job in the sense that he you know he's going to work his butt off too and he's going to just keep coming back for more and uh it'll kind of be fun to see see how far he can take it uh Tarant hey, what's up coach Keith uh Get, getting back to uh, Radens, he's a very analytical guy. So for you, you know, what's the key? Like, how do you unlock his ability to play fast and with the violence like you want him to play with? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And, and uh, you know, I think one thing is we just keep reminding him, like, there's no, you know, from a technique standpoint, there's we are always going to strive to play with great technique. But at some point, you got to take all that out of it and – and see a picture, make a decision, and play as fast and as violent as humanly possible. And I think the more we drill him that way, the more we rep him that way, and the more he trusts us that, hey, if you give us the right effort and the right finish, we'll coach the technique on the run. But you have to capture our style of play first. And it's not that he doesn't play hard, but it's like you're saying, it's kind of giving himself permission that like, hey, man, Nobody's saying you have to take the perfect step, first step. We want you to take a good first step, but there's a there's an element of hey, get the attitude and the and the um, aggressiveness right, and then the rest will kind of fall in the line. And then for Nate Davis, I mean, I believe he played at an All Pro level last year, but for him, what's the next step as far as becoming a bigger anchor along that offensive line? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I think. Uh, you know, I think Nate's taking some really big strides and, and we're all super proud of him in the sense that, you know, every year in the National Football League, he has become, a, you know, what we would call a better and, and, and better pro. And I don't mean necessarily what you see on the field. I'm just talking about his preparation. I'm talking about his offseason routine, all those types of things. He's starting to figure this thing out. And, uh, um, and, and so it's fun to kind of watch him grow and, and, and take this and, and treat it as, you know, not just a game, but a, a job where you have to put everything into it. And um, he's done a really nice job with that. And I think on the field that that next step comes down to consistency. Um, I think, you know, when Nate can be when you see Nate at his best, I think he's a dang good football player. And figuring out as, as we all have to, you know, the best pros are able to be really good on a consistent basis. So I think that's going to be his next step. Uh, Teresa. Keith, how much does it help Raidens and, and these young guys to have this off season program, which you didn't have last year. And, and uh, when you do have uh, guys like Nate and some of those veterans working around, how much is that going to help their ability to, you know, fit in and be ready by the time camp starts? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, I just think it's so critical. And um, I'm, I'm just thankful myself to for us to be out on the field and get some work in. I think it's, you know, like you look at Dylan and he he uh, he's got to learn from Ben Jones and and Dylan and and obviously our coaching staff and stuff like that. And, you know, we've had other guys that have been around and two around two and, you know, and Taylor and stuff like that. And so you know, he not only is able to kind of pick their brains and figure out, okay, this is, I need to steal this from this guy, this from this guy and all that stuff. But then he gets to go apply it and see a defense and make a call and do all those really quick decisions that, that are super important. So I think for all the rookies around the league, I think this time is super important and I think they're going to all benefit from it greatly. Uh, David Bocar. Keith, you, you seemingly have options at right tackle. What's sort of the balance between giving everybody a good look and settling on five guys to work together up front there? And, and you know, kind of when when do you want to make that decision? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And, and um, you know, I don't think that, you know, first and foremost, that decision, you know, is is will be made by Braves and and um, and, and John and obviously you know, our input will help. But, you know, I think that, that those decisions can't be made until fall camp, you know, and I, you know, our off season program is great and we're able to drill and do all those things, but we just don't have any full speed live team reps to truly evaluate these guys. But, you know, it's a, it's a unique situation. We have several guys that have playing experience on, 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 uh, on game day on Sundays. And then obviously Dylan coming in as a rookie and see where he fits in that picture it's, it's exciting. So, but I don't think, you know, there's been no decisions, you know, made or anything like that. And Braves can speak to this better than I can, but there's been no decisions. It's going to come down to fall camp and, and, and let that, you know, see how that journey goes for each one of them. Uh, ben Arthur. Hey Keith, uh, you know, Dylan, you know, obviously played, you know, it, it, exclusively, I, I think if not all, most of his snaps at left tackle and, you know, there's a, definitely a good chance he, he'll be getting a lot of looks on the right side. I know you mentioned that he's doing inside and out and he's kind of looked great so far. But what are some of the um, I guess what what are what kind of goes into like bringing in a guy who's played, you know, just left tackle and, and teaching him, you know, kind of the techniques, the footwork uh, on the right side? Like what, what are kind of the, the challenges that come um, with making that transition for a player? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of it is, um, it, it's getting them comfortable. So I know it's a, you know, pretty generic answer, but it's really just getting them a bunch of reps in both stances and and getting them comfortable. And, and you know, it's probably not as extreme as a baseball player who's able to, you know, bat right and left-handed. I don't think it's probably that extreme, but I think there's some parallels there where, you know, the guys that do it really well, I'm not so sure they feel much difference in a left stance compared to a right stance and whether they're on the backside and whether they're down blocking or base blocking or whatever, they find a way to make it all kind of feel normal and, and, and about the same. And I think the only way to do that is just to continue to rep them, continue to drill them and, and you know, just simple stuff, you know, just the basics. I mean, just after practice, working some just simple pass set footwork drills and stuff like that, just so we can feel that balance and feel that body posture that we're looking for that maybe is natural on the left side, but not the right side. Uh, Emily Kraft. Hey, like, uh, as close as you can get to the camera, it, it shows your face better. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate right. it. No, you're good. You're good. Um, I've just got another question about Adam Kuhn again. I'm curious, have you ever worked with an NFL player who has, hasn't played football since high school and can his, you know, kind of fresh perspective and that focus on fundamentals and technique help some of the guys around him? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm trying to think, I don't know that. Um, I remember one year we, uh, this is a different team, but we drafted a guy from D line as an offensive lineman. And that was, at least he was in football and, and had a general understanding, but that really was kind of similar in the sense of, of um, you know, starting over from a stance and all that. But, you know, I think what it does for us is, as coaches is it brings us back to, you know, those days when we coach college football and stuff like that. And you're, you're getting a, you're getting a 18 year old kid coming in and, and uh, maybe their offense in high school 
they didn't even get in a three point stance or didn't get in a two point stance or they only ran the ball or whatever it was. And you have to try and teach them to be balanced and and start all over, just figuring out how a stance on how to not only, you know, run block, but pass block and, and be able to do both. So it kind of brings you back. It, it, you know, in my mind, I'm sitting there racking through like all these drills we used to do with high school camps and stuff like that, just to kind of get the basics down. And uh, it's kind of been refreshing and, and, and you know, um, brings back some pretty good memories. Uh, John Bunner. Hey, Keith, I'm coming in from the other side, so I'm sorry to be redundant here, but uh, I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit about um, Dylan's transition, you know, from a smaller school level to the NFL. Uh, how's that going? And, and does that typically, you know, take a little bit longer for, for a guy from that, that level to, uh, to make the change? Well, I think that, you know, I think from the, you know, the playbook standpoint and all that stuff, no, I don't think that transition is, you know, they do a really nice job at North Dakota State and they've, you know, they've won a lot of games there and, and football, they take football serious and all that stuff. I think that, you know, I think every person's a little different where what I was saying earlier with Dylan, which what's really cool is, you know, you can definitely tell it's, you know, the moment's not too big for him and, he just is, a, a, you know, every, he will go all day and and there's going to be good plays and bad plays, but there's no quitting him. There's no give up. There's no you can't keep this guy down. He just keeps coming back for more. And I think when you have that mentality, it really helps the transition, regardless of whether you're small school or big school, but just coming from college to professional football and um you know, he, he's got a, he's got the ability to kind of just keep going and there's no quitting the guy. So that's, that's been, I would say, you know, probably the funnest part working with him so far. Yeah, and just on Adam, I, I came in at the end of your, your uh, comment on Adam, but uh, um, you know, how much, you know, he's so clearly, uh, you know, on a, on a different level from other guys, how uh, challenging is that for you? You know, a, a completely different set of you know, uh, teaching the uh, skills that you have to bring, I guess, for, for someone like him, as opposed to the, every other lineman uh, in the room. Yeah. I mean, like, like I was saying before, it's kind of, it's kind of fun and, and refreshing because it's, it's literally like, you know, we, we, all of our coaching backgrounds, we certainly didn't start in the NFL. So um, it reminds me of coaching high school football camps and, you know, in, in, uh, when we, when we were working college and doing all those college circuits, man, and, and, getting guys lined up and hey, you know, basically a, a box or a grid and, and just working on their stance and their first step. So it's, it's kind of fun. It brings you back to all those, um, you, you know, it brings you back to the basics and, and we always were come back to the basics with, with our other guys too, but not, not, you know, m maybe not necessarily to step one, a um, like we have to with Adam. So it's been fun and, and um, you know, he's handled it well too. Thank you. Uh, last two, uh, Terry. Keith, uh, when you get Taylor Lewan back in the fold, how how much will that kind of change, you know, the ability to single block and do more of the things maybe in pass protection that uh, you had set, on, set to do at the outset last year but had to adjust because of his injury? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, take, you know, taking – having somebody like Taylor – is definitely, um, you know, you go into third down in a game, which obviously I think the players would agree. It's probably third down and two minute is probably the most stressful time of any game, and uh, for those guys and and for the coaches for that matter. But yeah, it gives you it gives you a peace of mind that you know you know we have a lot of um, obviously respect for Taylor and we have really high expectations for him that hey, you know you're not you we we need you to win over there. And you're not we'll give you help, but it won't be as often as some of these other guys. And so it allows you to kind of spread the love to other places, like you're saying. So I think that, um, you know, I, Taylor would expect that. And, and uh, that's certainly our expectation of him. So we're, we're, you know, excited to get him back. Teresa, can you squeeze in one more? I'll try to keep it tight. Keith, you've got so many guys coming back new year, but you also have Derek coming back. Uh, is it a thought of trying to continue some momentum over the last couple of years of him leading the league and rushing and, or just building on this great season that you all had last year? I mean, the sacks were down, the yards rushing were up, obviously. Uh, what, what's the thought process of trying to build on that right now? 
Yeah, I think, you know, from our standpoint, it's, it's, you know, from especially the coaches, it's trying to ignore what we did in the past and re and, and rebuild or, or start over, you know, it's like, um, it, it, you know, you don't want to forget the lessons you've learned. So our, our goal is to, is to remember the lessons we've learned over the past several years so that we can use those to, you know, not make the same mistakes and, 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 you know, carry with us a little bit of that confidence that we've had in the past. But at the end of the day, our mindset is to rework, re-earn everything that we get. And so we, we try to use the past as a learning tool. And after that, we try to forget it and start over. I just think you have to do that to stay on top of your game and to stay um, at your best. You know, you can't, you can't spend too much time thinking about the years before.